Hi. It's now time for us to start the vertical theory portion of the theory lessons for um, classical piano and guitar class here at NCSSM. Um, these lessons are called vertical theory because they basically deal now with notes that are stacked on top of each other as opposed to notes that are sort of working in a linear fashion. In the linear theory we're dealing with scales and intervals primarily and keys. In the vertical theory we're dealing with triads or chords. So we're going to start by um, defining a few things, making sure that you understand some of the terminology we'll be using, and then we'll get right into the theory lesson. Uh, first of all, it's important to understand that in music, harmony results when we put notes together and they're played simultaneously. So um, uh, the chords or groups of notes played together help to create harmony. When we put those pitches together in specific patterns, that gives us uh, chords. Um, now, in the harmony that we're used to hearing here in the West, um, uh, there are some very uh, relatively specific rules on chords and chord structure, and we're going to begin really learning those rules here as part of this theory. So, let's go ahead and take a look as we move to the staff and begin to um, get into some of the real specifics here. Chords are also known uh, in, their most basically in their most basic form as triads. Now that term triads comes because there are three notes that are going to be working together. Now in the interval portion of linear theory you learned how to identify all of the different intervals and triads are based very strongly on thirds. In fact, a triad consists of three notes that are built in thirds. The lowest note of the triad is known as the root. Okay, and the root is um, in some ways the most important note of the triad. Then we have the next note which is known as the third and of course the top note which we'll think of as the fifth. And I think that makes sense because if we're thinking about the interval, the interval from the root to the next note up is a third and the interval from that note to the, er, from the root to the top note is a fifth. So I think that should make pretty good sense to all of you. But what is the, um, what is the um, specific uh, interval? Well, from the root we'll put root 3, 5 up here. Uh, that sort of represents our triad. From the root to the third needs to be a, for a major chord, it needs to be a major third. This is for a major triad. And from the third to the fifth needs to be a minor third. And incidentally, just for your information, the distance from the root to the fifth ends up being a perfect fifth. And this will build a major chord for us, or a major triad. From root to third is a major third. From third to fifth is a minor third. Okay? If we take a look at the chord that I built right there, the notes are G, B, and D. So if we have uh, let's go to our other screen. We have G, B, and D in that order. From G to B has to be a major third, and in fact, one, two, three, four half steps. And from B to D has to be a minor triad. There's our D. One, two, three half steps. So in fact, G, B, D is a major triad. Okay, let's move back and let's identify another kind of triad. How about a minor triad? Okay, we still have a root, a third, and a fifth. But in a minor triad, the distance from root to third is a minor third, and the distance from third to fifth is a major third. So a good example of a minor triad would be from G to B flat to D. 
And in that case, G, B flat, D. In that case, let's just start up on this upper G. There's our G, there's our B flat, there's our D. One, two, three half steps, that's a minor third. One, two, three, four half steps, that's a major third. So we have our major and our minor triads. If I were to give you um, three notes, and let's go ahead and give you um, the note A, and we will give you an A here, an A here, and an A here. Now, what I want to do is build a major triad using that A as the root here, and we'll use it as the third here, and we're going to use it as the fifth here, and show you the process for doing this. So, here we have the A is the root, so we're just going to put a third above it and another third above that. Okay? Then here, where A is the third, we'll put a third below it and a third above it. And here, where A is the fifth, we're going to put two thirds below it. So, first of all, we've got our triads note names determined, but we want to make a major triad in all instances. So we know the A has to remain A on each of them. So let's do a little bit of work here and realize here in this one where it's the root, we have an A, a C, and an E. A, C, and E. So let's go to our uh, keyboard here and we've got A, C, and E. Now for a major triad, it's got to be a major third on the bottom. One, two, three, up to make it major, it's got to be C sharp. So let's go back to that and simply go C sharp. Then we go from that C sharp and we go one, two, three, and sure enough, that gives us uh, a minor uh, third from C sharp to E. So we've got a good major triad here. The major triad is A, C sharp, and E. So that's correct. Okay? Now let's look at the next one. Here we have the letters F, A, and C. Okay? There's our F. Here's an A. Let's count our half steps. One, two, three, four. Oh, so in fact, an A is a major third above F. And from A to C, one, two, three. So we have a major triad already with F, A, and C. That doesn't need any sharps or flats of any kind. Okay? Now the last one, we have D, F, and A. D, F, and A. Remember, we can't change the A. It was given to us. So from D, F, and A, we'll go back D. Here's our F. And here's our A. We need a major third on the bottom. One, two, three. Mm, that won't work. We've got to go up here to F sharp. And from F sharp, one, two, three, that works. So D, F sharp, A becomes our major triad. And that would be how we could take that same note and sort of make it either the root or the third or the fifth of various triads. Okay? Now it's time for you to go ahead and take a look at the lesson and uh, try to apply some of this stuff that you have learned. Remember a triad has a root, a third, and a fifth, and it is a major third from the root to the third in a major chord or a major triad, and a minor third from the third to the fifth. And if we have a minor triad, it's a minor third from root to third, and major third from third to fifth. Let me write that down one more time, just so that that stays clear in your mind. A major triad from root to third to fifth is a major third and then a minor third. For a minor triad, from root to third is a minor third, and from third to fifth is a major third. I hope that's clear, 
and you can go ahead and go to work and do the first assignment in vertical pitch.